Adding a little milk replacer powder to water and stirring it up seems like a pretty simple thing to do. But when it comes to mixing and feeding milk replacer to calves, or any baby animal for that matter, there are a surprising number of issues that can creep up, either from a mixing, feeding, or an animal performance standpoint. How we measure milk replacer powder, how we mix it with water, and the amount and temperature at feeding time affect both the milk replacer and the calf. The instructions on the tag tell us to mix a certain amount of powder, which is a weight measurement, with a specific amount of water, which is a volume measure. The only way to accurately measure weight is to use a scale. There are a whole variety of scales available from hanging scales to floor scales to fit any farm situation. Each bag of milk replacer comes with a measuring cup or scoop, but the cup measures volume, not weight. Lines drawn on the cup try to bridge the gap between weight and volume, but they only approximate the actual weight of the milk replacer powder. How you scoop, whether you have two fingers inside the cup or hold the cup around the outside, whether you pack it or heap it, and who's doing the scooping, all result in measuring differences. Even the density of milk replacer powder changes a bit over time and affects how much powder actually fits in the cup. Environmental and storage conditions can all affect product density. So the only way to assure consistent measuring is to actually weigh the powder. And calves do best when you are consistent. Many calf raisers use a large scoop when mixing up batches of milk replacer. It's a handy way of scooping powder into a bucket for weighing, but a word of caution when using a scoop like the one on the right for actually measuring milk replacer. Well, to begin with, you need to ignore measuring scales that are printed on the scoop. The ounce marks over here are actually for measuring liquid, and if you use them for measuring milk replacer, you'll end up with about half the amount of powder you actually need. To find out how much the scoop actually holds, you need to weigh the powder and mark the side of the scoop accordingly. This is a rare issue with experienced calf raisers, but it does come up from time to time and is usually accompanied by poor calf performance. So when you're on a farm evaluating or troubleshooting calf performance, be sure to pay attention to how milk replacer is being measured. If a cup or scoop weight is off, this can lead to a big difference between what's expected and what actually happens. Use a scale to check weights periodically to keep on top of this issue. Of course, using a scale to measure milk replacer instead of a cup avoids the problem altogether. The standard mix rate for most milk replacers is 10 ounces of powder added to 2 quarts of water, or 1 and a quarter pounds of powder to a gallon of water. When you add milk replacer powder to water, you'll notice that the powder displaces some of the water. This makes the total mix volume greater than what you started with. For example, when you add 10 ounces of powder to 2 quarts of water, the total mix volume is about 2.2 quarts. And for every gallon of water you start with, you end up with about 1.1 gallons of total volume after milk replacer powder has been added. And when feeding two quart bottles, you'll need to fill the bottle all the way to the rim to get the right amount to the calf. The concentration of powder in the milk replacer solution is referred to as percent solids. With the standard mix rate, solids is 13%. Whole milk is about 12.5%. Calculating solids is just some simple mathematics. With the standard mix rate, we start with 1.25 pounds of powder, to which we add 1 gallon of water, which weighs about 8.3 pounds. This gives us a total weight of the solution of about 9.6 pounds. To figure out the percentage of this solution that's milk replacer, we take the weight of the milk replacer that we used and divide that by the total weight of the solution. And this gives us 0.13. We simply multiply this value by 100 to convert the answer to a percent. There is another way to mix milk replacer powder with water. We start with our measured amount of powder, but in this case we add just enough water to end up with a final mix of one gallon of solution. A gallon of whole milk weighs about 8.6 pounds, and that's the value we'll use here. In our previous example, we ended up with a little over one gallon of solution. In this case, we have exactly one gallon. To determine the percentage of powder in the solution, we take the weight of the powder we used and divide that by the weight of the gallon of solution. And this gives us 0.145. Multiplying by 100 gives us 14.5% solids. 
mixing this way results in a more concentrated solution. The upper limit for solids and milk replacers is about 18 percent, and the closer you get to this number, the more important it is to ensure calves have access to clean water at all times. As the solid level increases, calves pull more water into their digestive tract to dilute the solution. Without access to additional water, calves will move more water from their bloodstream into their digestive tract, which ultimately can lead to dehydration or diarrhea. Calculating solids is pretty easy and can be a really helpful tool when you're evaluating a farm's feeding program. When mixing milk replacer, it's best to add the powder to the water, not the other way around. If you add the powder first, you may find that some of it sticks to the bottom of the bucket when you begin mixing, especially along the bottom edge, which can be hard to get to. When mixing by hand, using a wire whisk or whip is an excellent way to ensure complete mixing. Whisks are specifically designed for this function and are available in lots of sizes, even up to 36 inches long. One mixing technique that's occasionally used is a hose with a spray nozzle. The problem you can run into is that the high pressure spray can cause excessive agitation of the milk replacer, and all this agitation can create lots of foam and can even damage the fat particles, affecting their solubility in water as well as their digestibility in the calf. So avoid this approach. Some farms like to add power to the mixing process. A simple approach is to use a variable speed drill with a paint mixer attachment. This can work well, especially when mixing in five gallon buckets, but power tools in the hands of a young inexperienced calf feeder can lead to injuries, so use caution when employing this technique. Power mixers can be a good choice when mixing large batches of milk replacer. Mixers can be stationary or portable like the one in this picture. Mixed tanks are typically made of plastic or stainless steel. One technique that's been gaining in popularity is the automatic calf feeder. These systems are mainly being installed in colder climates, especially in the Northeast. This is a computerized system primarily for group house calves that automates the process of measuring, mixing, and feeding milk replacer. Although this is a very interesting approach to calf feeding and management, these automated systems are beyond the scope of this discussion. Solubility is an important aspect of how well milk replacer powder mixes with water. Ingredients such as fat are not soluble in water. And to overcome this challenge, we create a particle that has fat on the inside, which is the insoluble portion, and proteins which are very soluble on the outside. This process, called encapsulation, allows the protein-coated fat to go into solution. Solubility, or how much milk replacer powder will go into solution, also depends on the water temperature. The temptation is to check water temperature by using your fingers. It's quick and easy, but it can be very inaccurate. Cool water can feel pretty warm to hands that have been working outside on a cold day. So to avoid inaccuracy, it's best to avoid this technique and use an actual thermometer. The best temperature for mixing milk replacer is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. If you mix some water that's too cold, it's more difficult for many milk replacer ingredients to fully mix into solution, and it's certainly not the best feeding temperature and may actually decrease digestibility. You can also mix in water that's too hot. Mixing in excessively hot water can make the proteins that coat the fat stick to each other, causing fat particles to clump together. Another undesirable outcome of mixing with water that's excessively hot is that proteins may actually migrate away from the fat. In this case, fat particles will join together forming larger and larger fat droplets. Without their protein coat, these fat droplets are no longer soluble in water. This often results in a greasy film being deposited on mixing and feeding equipment. Mixing at 110 degrees ensures that milk replacer powder goes into solution fully without any damage that can affect solubility or digestibility. Now that we have the milk replacer mixed at the right temperature, it's time to feed it to calves. The milk replacer should be cooled from 110 degrees at mixing down to 102 degrees for feeding, which is right around the calf's body temperature. Calves are not fond of drinking excessively warm milk replacer and may drink more slowly or may just not drink all of it if the temperature is too warm. 
If you feed colder milk replacer, the calf will warm it up to its own body temperature after it's consumed. There's no way around that, and it takes energy for the calf to do this. So rather than having that energy going toward growth and maintaining health, this energy is actually being lost on warming milk replacer inside the calf. This can become a serious situation for young calves during cold weather. Feeding colder milk replacer can slow the rate at which the calf drinks and can also reduce its desire to drink. Cold feeding is a technique that's used to slow down and reduce intake in calves that have continuous access to milk replacer, which prevents overeating. So unless that's the objective, milk replacers should be fed at or very close to the calf's body temperature. Feeding warm milk replacer is also related to closure of the esophageal groove. This is a muscular fold at the end of the esophagus that closes when stimulated and funnels milk directly into the abomasum. This prevents it from dropping into the rumen and souring or becoming fermented. How milk replacer is handled between mixing and feeding may need to change at certain times of the year to ensure it's the right temperature when it arrives at the calf. In winter, heat dissipates quickly, so transportation and feeding processes need to account for this heat loss. The opposite is true in summer, where you may need to add a bit of cold water at the end of mixing to lower the temperature so it's not too hot to feed. As with mixing milk replacer, a thermometer is a must-have tool to find out what's going on and to help develop procedures that ensure milk replacer is fed at the right temperature. When it comes to measuring, mixing, and feeding milk replacer, there are three simple indispensable tools. If you don't weigh the milk replacer powder, you're guessing. A scale removes all the guesswork. Portable options include a hanging scale and a small digital scale. The digital scale is very handy when measuring a scoop of powder, whereas the hanging scale might be more practical for weighing buckets. Measuring the temperature of milk replacer at mixing and at feeding are equally important. Mixing at 110 degrees maximizes solubility, and feeding at 102 degrees removes factors that could deter intake or affect the energy available for growth and maintaining good health. More calf raises are apt to use a thermometer at mixing, but few have any idea of what the temperature of the milk replacer is at feeding time. And a calculator can be very handy when it comes to evaluating milk replacer solids. It's long been said that calves do best when you are consistent, and these three tools are indispensable when it comes to providing the consistency for calves to thrive.